Good, good win. Uh, Lout, it was nice to see that. The guy hadn't pitched in a long time coming into the preseason. And I know we're, we're into April right now, but it's still a lot as you come back from an injury to manage the rehab and come back and try to figure out a little bit of work in the preseason to get into this. That's what we had seen him do before. That fastball's got a good look. I think he struck out more himself than we did the rest of the ball game against the team that kind of battles in there for you. Uh, Jay, you did a nice job and thought their starting pitcher moved the ball around. Uh, it had really good action and sync. Clearly it gave us problems and he, he did a good job and he hung in there. That ball that Cam hit squared him up pretty good and he worked through it and, and kept pitching. Um, not as sharp out of the bullpen today. Clearly I think Ox might have retired the batter he came in to face initially, and I don't know that we did other than, than him. So not what we need, but enough. And some of the defensive moments, the 6-4-3 the double play, that might have been in the sixth inning with nobody out. Fisher comes and gets out well. Faroe's on the correct side of the base. It's the right feed, and off you go. That was a game-holding type play. Um, Tibbs, change up through the middle, backside home run, turns on a fastball in kind of showed his hitting prowess today. But the line drive, like he's had several really nice running, sliding, diving plays in right field, which is what you would like to see happen. And he's doing it at some key moments. Fisher played a nice game at shortstop, came and got the ball really well. His double was big off the screen. But I see the game and I look at how Lauk's last start went and we didn't feel the same stuff from him that we saw and felt as he went through it today. And that was about the maximum pitch count that we were comfortable with him doing. And that's that's where he's been. So that was that. But, but a good win. Clearly more offensively we had moments where we could have blown that thing open. But it's not always going to be that phase of the game. We ran the bases well. We defended well. And we bobbed and weaved enough on the mound to hold the thing in check. For, for a freshman only making his second start, just how impressive is Cal's game clock at, at shortstop? It's really nice. Just the sense of how to come get it, when to come get it. I, I think your, your good infielders, the initial read, like how the, the batter's getting out of the box, you, you, you aren't watching that, but you gather that information really quickly. And then some of that helps you decide how to, how to play the ball. And he knows how to use his feet and his arm well. Like he's got quick hands and a nice arm swing through there. So he's just a nice, well-rounded infielder that continues to learn and need experience. Like he made a mistake tonight that you probably saw that he knew right away. We addressed it. Um, but overall, just the awareness of self in the game is very solid for a young player freshman. You mentioned that double. Uh, it came off the, his previous at bat. He had a runner third, less than two outs. He didn't have a, a great at bat, and then gets down two strikes. For him to to see that out of a freshman, the very next at bat, I, that's got to be really encouraging for a head coach. Obviously. Yeah, no, it, it is, and we've seen that in practice. Like we see him hang through some tough stuff. Like our pitching staff and our scrimmages is no, it's no treat. There's just a lot of different stuff coming at you, and the game constantly challenges you. Like it. It forces you to respond and answer. It does. And even in sequences of at bats, defensive moments where it doesn't quite go how you want it, that ball finds you again. And sometimes those at bats, it's just the karma of the game. It constantly challenges you. And I thought he responded really well just through the sequence of at bats. Um, Lauk start is another example. Like, we had a long talk about this going into the game, and it needed to be his A stuff from pitch one and then throw pitch two with your A stuff and pitch three. And when it's enough, you'll know that it's enough and we'll come get you. So again, the challenging of the game, we put him in a position to be challenged. Fisher responded to the challenge within a couple innings of the game itself. It was, it was a good response. Following up on that with Lauk, of course, outs are always important, but for him to go deeper in the game and you guys trying to piece everything together, how important was him getting out you know, with two games in the midweek. Yeah, you need somebody to lengthen it out. And you're starting him knowing, hey, this is clean. We've seen him start these things on our field and our scrimmages, and we've seen him chew us up a little bit. So you hope that's where the length is. 
and we felt more comfortable going into this to let him start versus bringing him into who knows what situation that the game may present as you play nine innings. You just you don't know. The only thing you know is that when you start inning one, there's nobody on base, and you've done all you need to do to warm up and get ready. So he responded and answered and really delivered in a method that would provide what you need in a, in a starting pitcher, and it had that look. Now, we didn't really know how long it was going to go, but it had the look we wanted, for sure. And then following up on that, who's available for tomorrow? Do you have a plan yet? Are any of the guys that pitch today also you could foresee pitching tomorrow? I I need to sit down <laughs> for a second. And I, I mean, I would think Joe, and I, I don't know if I've even looked at this. Ox are 11 pitches. Hudson threw, what, 6-7. Joe threw 11. Micah does a great job of managing the workload and he's got every time they've been on the mound how much they've thrown and when and sometimes it's not just today it's you need to backtrack and see like we've asked out a lot out of Joe Charles who hasn't been fortunate enough to have a lot to ask out of him because he hasn't been healthy so then you have to start backtracking on the days and weeks and think through the workload so sometimes these days to come in here and answer that I I don't know the guys that didn't pitch are available, but you would think there's a couple today that are back and, and several that are not. I think you got it. I appreciate it. Daniel Cantu has been a big part of the lineup. I'm not going to for tonight, but he's been a, 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 a big part of y'all's lineup. Um, can you speak on him and how he's played this season? Yeah, it's been a streaky deal for him. Like, he didn't get out of the gates good, right? And then he got going a little bit, and then I think it cooled off, and then he really got going, and now it's cooled off. And sometimes I tell him that's why it's called an average. You know, there's, it's hard to go one for three or one for, uh, every day. So you have to ride the waves of this, and he works down there as much as anybody on what he's doing. Uh, the play today that you guys may have noticed, but early in the game, Fisher had a tough play, like another slow roller, and he flipped it over there. He comes off the bag, he grabs it, he tags the runner, and he makes it look easy. If you try to hang in there and keep your foot on the bag and reach through that, and then here comes a runner and you're reaching into the runner, he has done that half a dozen times. So the offense being what we know is going to be an average, like it's going to fluctuate. He steadied things for the infielders in the way he manages the first base. It's a left-handed bat. It's an experienced guy. He's physical. He uses the field. So when he's on it, you get all of those dimensions, which we, we've seen that happen a lot. But the defense sure helps if the offense is in one of those moments where things might not be going your way. But he's been a really nice piece of what we're doing. I think Brady's first strike out came on a changeup. And- he incorporated that a bit more, it seemed like, today. Just how big would that ver- third variation be for him off the fastball? Huge. The fastball j- is just really sneaky. And it, the slot doesn't really match the action of the ball. So when that happens, and their guy may have had a little bit too, where something, it's not quite doing what you think, and your eyes cannot make that adjustment, especially on a fastball real well. So the changeup and the breaking ball play exceptionally well off the fastball when he's throwing it with the intent and the aggression that he threw it today. Coach, you guys are a perfect 7-0 now in midweek games. How important is it to the morale of the locker room that the bullpen can just come out here and, you know, like you said, they didn't have the greatest game, but it was enough, right? How important is it that these guys, you know, give the batters a chance to win the game like this? No, it's huge. I mean, that's, that's what you're trying to build when you construct a pitching staff. Do you have enough depth? Do you have enough quality? Do you have enough stuff? You don't know the roles these guys are gonna be in when you try to build your team. You don't. You you may have a crystal ball idea with a few of them, but you don't know. They're essentially all, in some form or fashion, a starting pitcher coming in. Some of the transfer older guys may be relievers by nature, Um, but you build it to try to give you enough depth and options to manage a game like this and a game like tomorrow. And and you know some of these games are not going to allow you to have the starting pitching length that you hope you get in some of your weekend starts. That's part of it. You have to be athletic enough on the field to play the defense that keeps the ball in play in check. And we did a nice job of that today in the double plays and Tibbs catching right field and Cantu and 
Cam coming to get the bunt. That was not an easy play. He made it look easy. Jaime, the line drive. Like, there's a lot of guys, the catchers, both catchers. So you try to build it to give you options on these days outside of maybe the normal nucleus of pitchers and keep guys fresh and, and bob and weave.